Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about the future of control systems integration with Alicia Gilpin. Most people call her Allie G. And she's the Director of Engineering and Process and Controls at Process and Controls Engineering LLC. And she's also the co-host of Automation Ladies. So Allie G, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk with you. We've been connected on LinkedIn for a while and I uh, definitely was excited to have you here on Eco Ask Why today. And maybe s- some of our listeners out there, they may not be familiar with a control systems integrator. So how do you explain it is what you do to others? Sure. Um, so, you know, we are involved in manufacturing, um, especially when, you know, basically manufacturers bring new equipment in. Um, they They need it to all be controlled, like in a central location. So that's the integration part of the title is, um, you know, because the systems integrator literally can take everybody's different, like different OEMs make different machinery, right? And and they Mm -hmm. take all that machinery and then they um, kind of integrate that with all of the control software and hardware that's already in that plant or um, add new software. But basically they do all the like industrial computer stuff um, behind you know, uh, factories, factories and manufacturing. Hmm. So how you automate right. things. So, I mean, right. So, I mean, it, for, for you, it doesn't matter for, from a vendor standpoint, you, you're, you're connecting all the pieces and making it all talk together. Yeah. And I get thrown so many different vendors and new parts all the time that I've never seen that I can't just say that I specialize in any particular, especially because automation's changing all the time. So even new technology shows mm-hmm. up and we figure out how to integrate that. It's kind of fun. It sounds like it's, I'm, I'm curious, you mentioned uh, so much is changing. What have been some of the most prevalent changes that you've seen, uh, the, particularly in how you support clients and maybe technology over the last couple of years? Um, so the big thing right now is there's a huge rush push to kind of get ahead of the cybersecurity um, aspect of um, industrial control systems now. Um, and that, of course, it's been a thing, but, you know, within the last two years, hackers have gotten extremely interested in industrial control systems and or what it, what's also called operational technologies. And so they, I watched something from two years ago where they were showing each other, like, on the Black Hat conference. So that's their, like, major, like, show each other conference. They were showing each other... PLCs, like how to go after them, what they do, um, and specifically what PID loops are, um, and then just like what different channels like PLCs talk on, um, just lots of really disturbing information. So with that interest and the fact that now ransomware is kind of just like hitting everybody, whether you're in infrastructure or manufacturing, um, everyone is, there's a big push to like secure, you can't just put in whatever you want now, um, everything needs to just be like with security in mind, with cybersecurity in mind. Because with this whole industrial 4.0, industry 4.0 is about adding data. Well, adding connectivity also adds uh, hackability, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. So that that's the biggest change that I've seen, at least in the last you know five years. That's the huge push. And there's now new appliances for people like me that aren't IT people. I'm not Cisco certified. Um, I don't, I'm not a networking expert, um, but I can buy certain devices now for industrial use. Um, They call them security appliances. And like, I can do something to kind of just keep, you know, malicious signals coming in and out of my panel. Um, Because one of the things that's normal for me to do is actually put like my machine or my panel behind a NAT router. Um, But there's kind of another way to do that where you're at. And that's actually just so that you can use whatever IP addresses you want. And then they have to just come in through your router and you don't have to comply with their address. You just get to use your original IP addresses when you design. And that's the purpose of a NAT router. But anyway. um, uh. Yeah, like so so having the ability now to like buy these devices um helps, you know, the integrators and, you know, the end users 
that aren't specifically, you know, the IT network um, do additional things. But at the end of the day, you know, that connectivity is also governed by the IT department. So there's always going to be that uh, you can't just take it all um, as much as we'd like to. Like we have to work, you know, with them no matter what, because they do like handle all of the enterprise side. So the business end of the data, uh, which is being accessed, the the um, the ICS data is being accessed by the enterprise, you know, data systems. So you know, with mm-hmm. all this connectivity, there's just now a giant push to secure everything. So like old PLCs need to be upgraded. It's actually a push. Um, there are certain models of PLCs out there that are just absolutely you know not acceptable by today's standards, and they're being pushed to take them out and put new ones in you know everybody's being kind of pushed to do that and um just from a you know security standpoint especially if you're doing Mm -hmm. um municipal systems or or you know uh utility systems yeah i I went on a tangent there no i mean i think it was a good tangent because i mean this is an area that we're hearing a lot of and i'm just it's it's very interesting so you know as a systems integrator you know, you're living in that OT world. Obviously, a lot of things are now converging to the IT. So you hear a lot about this IT, OT convergence and things that are happening. Sounds like you're seeing that firsthand. And every time you do enter new technology, you just create more risk entry points for those hackers. And, the, and anytime so, you have an entry point, you have to make sure you you, uh, you head that off at the pass. I'm curious, though, from a system integrator standpoint, you know, you're, you are you being forced into more of that? IT conversations and is is that leading to maybe some some hiring decisions that you're going to have to make to get more expertise in that IT realm or specifically around cybersecurity? Yeah, um the right now huge thing is everyone's doing their risk assessment. Everyone is rushing that's the that's kind of step 1 when you're like trying to figure out your place, you know, where are you and where are you trying to go with your cybersecurity and you know, your organization. And, you know, you start with that risk assessment. And so everyone's kind of at this point probably should have done a risk assessment already. But if you haven't, like you should probably do one. Um, And most people have already gone through their risk assessments. And, you know, that kind of told them that's where the push comes from. It's like the risk assessments is telling them, hey, you're wide open on a lot of these aspects and you need to quit that. And so there, there's now all these plans, and that is definitely including the integrators because the integrators are the ones upgrading those controllers. So there's old controllers, and they're being upgraded to new controllers, and um, it's not as simple as the IT people taking it over because it's still a SCADA system. So the like software, the yeah. servers, like, those are maintained by systems integrators, even though like the the computer hardware itself and like securing that is maintained by it so they you know they know they can get in those servers but they mostly just uh you know manage them from a from an ip address standpoint and just kind of keep them separated from normally separated from the enterprise and your, your the printers and all the servers on the data side on the it side to me the lines it just sounds like more and more getting a lot more blurred and it's and it's and it's forcing a lot of a lot of these these groups to come together. And I actually had a guy he 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 got a uh, uh, a MBA and he, and he also went and got a uh, he's a, he's a master in engineering too. So he's able to have conversations from from the plant floor to the management. But then you also have the, you need to have the conversation from the IT to the OT because they're separate languages that that we're yes. all talking. You're talking PLCs and SCADA systems, uh, maybe MES systems. Their ERP servers. That's different, different language altogether, right? Yes. So, I mean, when you think about control system integrators and 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 when people have that traditional mindset of what they what it is that you do, are they and are they envisioning you just strictly working on PLCs? Is that like a common myth out there that all a control system integrator does is work on PLCs? I'm just curious what when when people when people when you tell people that's what you do, what comes to mind automatically for them? That is actually one uh, more of what comes to mind is that like a a controls engineer is is strictly a programmer like of of OT devices, 
and you know mm-hmm. that they don't that they don't know SCADA is like not necessarily no, like known to them. And a lot of people do think that like SCADA is completely run by IT, and that's not true. Um, but um, so that's some of the misconceptions is that like SCADA is like this software, and like IT can help you put um you know uh, a factory uh, basically a SCADA client on your computer um and so that might be why you might confuse them as the ones like you know managing that system when they're not uh but they are managing that yeah. hardware that it sits on because it is part of the hardware all of the hardware that has you know ip addresses for any organization the SCADA servers are going to be part of that so mm. you know windows updates comes into play there yeah that's a hot topic Oh yes. Oh yes. It's it's just it's literally a time constraint because that should have been something that like I would recommend like anybody, you know, it that will not hurt you. It can only help you to have all that network like information, like certification. Um so yeah, if you can just get like your regular like PCNA, I think it is, like that is highly beneficial. Because you will, as a, like, and I did this the hard way because I didn't do that. Um, So when I went into, like, running virtual machines and, like, connecting virtual machines to, like, uh, that's when I really got into IT stuff was virtual machines. That's when it was like, okay, what's going on here with these operating systems? And how do I have, like, multiples on my, you know, running off software? It was kind of mind-blowing when I got into it. and But I was trying to get that stuff connected to PLCs and HMIs. Um, and so I, I did it brute force the hard way. And like, had I understood what the hell was actually going on when I first started, this was like my first controls job. I was kind of setting these VMs up and then finally got to like actually running them with like controllers. And it just was like, just this level of difficulty harder because you have to set up like the communications and that gets messed up and blurred mm-hmm. within your computer when you just have the software on your computer, like you're done. Like, and that's kind of like where that's the other misconception, right? Is that that's what controls engineers are just, they don't know anything about virtual machines, um, which is not true. We do now. Um, And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of networking that we do know. And it definitely helps if you're, if you have Cisco certification Uh, and it's, I highly recommend it, even though I haven't done it myself. (laughs) I will, as soon as I, you know, get the time, which will maybe be never. So (laughs) <laughs> oh, i'm curious which way do you what, what oh look at that cat right there <laughs> so what what way do you think would be easier uh would it be easier to have the control uh understanding and that uh, expertise and then go get the networking or should you get the networking first and then go learn the controls or is there is there a preferred path what, what, what do you which way would you guide somebody they're so different because i guess the like the the networking stuff like you'd be good at if you were actually in IT so you wouldn't be able to develop it as much although you would develop like the controls part of it um but that that mm-hmm. field work of like being out in the field and like hooking sensors up to PLCs and actually seeing like how controllers are connected how the servers are really connected to the controllers once that makes sense to you like that's i i feel more valuable to get first so I think it might be easier to get okay. it after the fact. Um, but that's not true because when you're in college, you can get these like certifications just like by just kind of doing them. So maybe it would be better to do that first. I just hadn't done that. I guess it's there's no shortcut. So once you like figure one out, it's going to have to you're going to have to put good time into both, I think, to develop them separately. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking through from, from a process standpoint, from from systems integration as pr- i just see that as a longer road of 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 cuz you get, cause to your point you need to see all these different sensors and different applications and the setups and there's just a lot with, when it comes to you know working inside a plant that that maybe you may be better off to start that path first and then go to IT but who knows you know you, maybe you can come from IT and you can jump right in and cuz you have that IT knowledge it may click faster for you but let, let's keep rolling allergy so 
I'm curious for, from your standpoint, from the technology that you do work with, what's the hardest part of keeping up with the technology specifically, you know, in the control world? Because, I mean, it is, I mean, we're a distributor. We sell this stuff. It's changing all the time. But from an integration standpoint, are there any challenging devices or, or technologies that, that are constantly, you know, making you scratch your head? Yes. And one of the most frustrating thing, I suppose, is you know, the way that like our industry does the software. So the way our OEMs deal software to us and the way that they change it is so, so frustrating. It uh, pro It's like the most frustrating part of this job is, you know, once your customer is kind of binds to like an OEM, for a as a control vendor and in the US we all know who that is um you know uh -huh. once you bond once you once you, you know that bond has been made and some of these bonds go back 50 years you know yeah the software is um always changing so and it's coming out a new version so for example why does that why would i care or why should to put it into like kind of physical context um so you, uh, I go out to, you know, get connected to a controller and I'm like, oh, I don't have this version. So, so now I have to go find internet, which if, if this is a remote location, that sucks. And if you're at a factory, that's not just going to willingly mm -hmm. give you internet. That also sucks. So, and you're now going to go jam it up and jam up whatever signal you do get to pull huge data files. And you have to do this all the time. And so that. That is a frustrating part of that job. But I've noticed that like the younger generation, like not me, like I, so I'm millennial, but like Gen Z, like what's whoever's right behind us, they have no patience for some of this stuff. And they're all really good at like Python and like they know, um, I don't know, they know a lot of like pretty good, pro. They, they're, they're like a lot of programmers, like a lot of engineers mm -hmm. are actually doing like serious, serious programming um before they ever get into the field um and so mm -hmm. that's different you know because i i was taught excel <laughs> as an engineer so that's hilarious it's like or, or visual basic behind excel so somewhat okay but like it's not i didn't learn c okay or you know because yeah that's not unless you were a software engineer that wasn't what you were taught now it's like everybody knows how to do python and like a bunch of different languages so anyway, they're not as, uh, they're kind of getting like angry. They're like, what is this stuff? Are you telling me I have to do this and this and this? And they're like, why would we do this? Um, or especially they don't like the, um, they don't like ladder logic. Ladder logic was built to like help maintenance people. And these new kids are like, I hate this. Like, or like people that come from just like traditional programming backgrounds. They're just like, this is so archaic and it is, but it works. And a lot of us know how to use it. So it's like, there's a giant debate even there. Um, so I guess that part is kind of yeah. just. Well, let's pull up that thread a little bit. Why don't they like the, the ladder logic? What, what's what's the reasoning behind that? Would they rather just program like an open open source format programming? Yes, they love their structured text like C programming because that's what they know. And it is like the ladder logic does limit you. You can't do all kinds of crazy things. Well, you can, but it's more difficult. And when they already know mm -hmm. how to use really powerful stuff, this is older stuff. Ladder logic is old. Ladder logic is about kind of looking like relay logic, like the way we read relay logic in a like ladder diagram with relays on it. Like that's kind of how that. You know, with some exceptions, that was like the basis of the way that basically the graphic user interface of the way we program now um, or the way a lot mm -hmm, of it's done. Mm -hmm. by, by the way, with the same programs that do ladder logic, you can turn on function blocks or do it in a different language. So they they do like translate into each other. But because of the way that like we were teaching our maintenance teams, everything has heavily been done in ladder logic for a long time. So there's a lot of running code, a lot of running code out there in ladder logic. Um, so they come, they show up and they look at that. And they're like, that is hideous. I'm going to do it in structured text. And so now there's just like disconnects between like the old knowledge, 
right? And and how the process works. And these new pe- these new kids kind of just like rolling with what they know. And there's like a there's it's getting kind of jammed up. It's getting jammed up. <laughs> I was going to ask you, how does that knowledge transfer happen? If you had that that older generation, they used to the ladder logic. How do, how does that yeah, you get passed down and get translate it to this structured text i mean do things get lost in the process um i'll I'll let you know in like five years (laughs) i don't know how that's actually gonna go um because we're in the middle like i'm still you know i don't have a you know i have 10 years of engineering experience but not all 10 of those years were um controls it was like six of it were six or seven it's control. So, you know, I was taught by people who learn ladder logic. Um, so that's mm-hmm. what they taught me. Um, mm-hmm. And I, they showed me some structured text because some customers required it. But it was like, in addition to a lot of ladder logic. So it was just kind of slipped in there. When you couldn't do it with ladder, you would like supplement with structured text and kind of do projects that way. But um, now these, yeah. Lots of new people, fresh kids coming out of college are hyper good programmers and engineers, and they can be taught industrial stuff. Um, And we should be listening to them to make things like more efficient. But um, like you said, how do you make sure that they get that old knowledge? I don't know. Um, You just. That that is like a huge issue with like lots of industries, I think, because of all of the like retirement that happened. Like it really hit everybody, a lot of industries, and now there are gaps. So, um, whatever we did learn, like the millennials learned from the the millennials that did work. Whatever we like learned is that's all we have right now. Is and and that's and that's steadily, you know, you know that, that that's changing every day. So I'm curious for the industrial manufacturer who doesn't have that engineer. Maybe they maybe they're at a risk point. I guess that's where the value of like a control system integrator like yourself, who can bring in and bridge those gaps, comes into play. Are you seeing that being more and more the case, where these manufacturers are outsourcing that type of work to people like yourself to come in and and be the experts? Um. Yeah. Like, they, everyone wants to have it in house. Um. But at the same okay. time, you know, project. It's more structured as like projects as as we get projects like there's an in-house guy if there is an in-house person they will run the projects Mm -hmm. but there's never like a whole team of people um that's why that's the benefit of like an integrator is to come in and there's like more than one person who could be working on you know this project with or just supplementary to like whoever is already working there but yeah there definitely are places that are hurting to get a controls person because their controls person left. Um, and so when these, when these positions up and leave, it's not that simple to just like pick any new programmer off the street because they're not all begging for jobs because they all have jobs. Um, right. And the ones who don't get picked up really fast. So if you see, uh, you know, what looks like an experienced controls engineer on the market, like you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to make a decision pretty quick. That's right. That's right. Kind of like the housing market here lately. You, if there's a house out there and it's your, it's your interest in, you better jump on it. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, hey, well I, I've, this has been a very informative conversation, Allie G. So I'm curious. We, we always wrap up Eco Ask Why with the why. So for you, why are you so passionate about control systems integration? So it goes back. I studied chemical engineering and I wanted to be a process engineer. And that's what I went out to do. And I became one. And I was doing that for a long time. And the biggest thing in my way, because I wanted to know everything, right? I'm like a big picture person. And like the biggest thing I couldn't do was the controls. So I could buy a pump. I could buy all this piping. I'd be like, okay, we're going to route this piping over here and it's going to go into this valve and then out and then a reducer. And like literally even the fittings, I was like that detailed. And like, like I would, I made a, 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 a recirculating loop for RO water once. Okay. And when I'm trying to test it, I can't 
I don't know how to get an HMI screen going. I don't know how to turn the PLC on. I didn't know anything about like how any of that was going on. So I, I'm all I need is to like cycle my my valve, for example. I had to go get somebody to do that. So I became that person because that was the people in my way. <laughs> and controls was like like once I found out like how to do it was just like intoxicating, and I'm just stuck now. Um, because that's too much power and I can't, I love it. <laughs> well, I'm so, I, I totally get that. And, and thank you so much for unpacking this stuff. Now, where, where should people go to connect with you and to learn more about what you're doing at, at uh, process controls and engineering? Um, so my LinkedIn page is really active. Um, so just look up, uh, you know, Alicia Gilpin or Ali G or, um, I also have a website, pce.llc, um, and that has links to my LinkedIn. So, okay, um, any of those. <laughs> well, we'll make sure we sync all that up in the in the show notes for you listeners out there that want to connect with Ali G. I highly recommend it. It's been uh, a phenomenal conversation here. Look forward to learning more from her uh, and come back as, as well, listeners, because we're going to have her on a future show uh, having to unpack her hero story. So, Ali G, thank you for joining with us today on Eco Ask Why. Thanks a lot. That was a fun conversation with Allie G. I tell you what, I learned a lot from her about control system integration and, and what that what works for her, the challenges that she is facing, and then what she's doing moving forward. And if you know what, if you're considering a, a career in control system inter, integration, you need to follow Allie, Allie G. She puts out some really good content on a, on a pretty much a daily basis. She's full of energy, lots of lots of of great insight that she'll provide. So be sure to check out the show notes there, connect with her and, 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 and learn as she goes forward. So thank you again. If you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, we would encourage you to leave us a rating and write a review. That would really help a lot. Share this with others. Maybe even share this with, with, with other ladies out there who, who you think need some encouragement. Because, again, Allie G, the information she provides, so, so valuable to everyone. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. -S 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 -S